Have you ever noticed how small the world has become? Or how much faster it spins today? The difference? The swiftness of communication and transportation. Distance no longer provides the insulation of time and space, making true neighbors of nations. And because all neighbors are not always friendly, it is imperative that our nation have a force in readiness. These are United States Marines, a power for peace in this world we live in. Always ready when brush fire threatens to erupt into conflagration. A force in readiness, just over the horizon. But normally, ours is a world dedicated to the ways of peace. To the ways of a neighborhood, like this community, and this lad. He might be the boy down the street, the kid who grew up on the block and went to school around the corner. He's a Marine now, in the service of his country, in your service. Back of him, there's an intense training program designed to develop a combat-ready Marine, a dependable fighting man who can be relied upon to accomplish the mission better than the man who assigned it ever thought it could be done. Using modern equipment to maximum advantage, employing newest techniques and most modern weapons, Marine Corps training is complete. It's continuous, concentrated, organized, as the business of being a Marine is learned until each Marine is prepared to take his place as a member of the mighty Navy Marine Corps team. As the individual Marine knows and feels the pride of being a member of the greatest fighting organization in the world. The phrase, the Marine Corps builds men, it's more than statement of fact, it's doctrine. Historically, the key to Marine success is the skill of the individual rifleman and the professional know-how of all the Marines who support it including the Marine in the Sky, the other member of the unique air ground team, ready on call to accomplish any required mission, from close air support to deep reconnaissance, in all weather, around the clock. Performing close air support, the A4D Skyhawk is one of the planes the rifleman constantly sees above him. Other planes, including the F4D Sky Ray and the F-8U Crusader are used at extreme altitudes to clear the sky and keep it clear of enemy aircraft. And this GV-1 refueler, with fighters nosing up, it tells its own story. The limitations of distance and time have been swept away. On short notice, Marine Air can deploy anywhere around the globe. Aircraft based in California can be on station halfway around the world, ready to fight in an amazingly brief time. Budget-sized and portable, this short expeditionary landing field has adapted the arresting gear of an aircraft carrier, developed by the Navy and the Marine Corps, so that planes may operate from ashore as soon as possible. It assures continuous and immediately available close air support during a landing. And a rubber tank farm arrives with the Navy ships, making marine aviation truly expeditionary a ready battle zone filling station designed to provide speed and service and ready fuel for thirsty jets, as well as for ground vehicles, including tanks, trucks, and jeeps. There's artillery, of course, including the eight-inch self-propelled howitzer. It's mighty, it's mobile, and Marines are trained to employ it. Mobile field artillery always has been an important part of Marine Corps armament including the heavy-duty 120-millimeter gun tank, a ready wheel horse in the artillery field, built for close infantry and anti-tank support. Modern-looking, the Antos, with its lethal battery of stovepipes, can deliver tremendous firepower. It's a versatile tank killer that can be air-delivered or landed over the beach. And the arsenal is always expanding with new arrivals, like the XM-70, a rapid-fire, power-packed precision weapon. And as combat arms advance and change, so do tactics and techniques.
rockets and missiles have also joined the Marines. They play important roles in any modern plans. Meet Honest John, for instance, a mighty long-range artillery rocket that delivers a powerful message in terms any enemy can understand. Marines blast into the supersonic age with many rockets and missiles. Here's the air-sweeping Sidewinder that seeks out and destroys its quarry, like this. Air to air, there's also the Sparrow. Air to surface, the guided bullpup. Ground to air and helicopter transportable, there's the Hawk, a primary instrument of defense against enemy air. Rockets might be as space age as the Terrier guided missile or as personal as the one marine rocket launcher with its lethal 3.5 projectile. And add personal magic, there's also deadly red eye, heat homing missile that one marine might manage. You're really into the future when you're in the Marine Corps. And speaking of ultra modern equipment, this amazing space age vehicle may be in the Marine Corps future. It's an air suspension platform that travels on compressed air. The one-man helicopter has arrived, too. It's ideal for leaping rivers or getting across the main street. Since Leonardo da Vinci, man has sought personal wings, and our Marine is sighting in on them. More important, this tiny mix master has a big brother. An entirely new doctrine of attack called vertical assault has been introduced by these big birds. Operating from carrier decks, the Navy Marine team can now deliver swift, powerful striking forces in any direction, from a proper show of strength to a division wing expeditionary force for any limited war emergency. And back of all this modern equipment, there's continuous school to train Marines in the use of modern weapons, like the Terrier guided missile. For weapons are only as good as the men behind them, as effective as the individual's training, his readiness to fight, his will to win. It's the individual Marine who counts. The officer, the sergeant major, the sergeant, the corporal, the private. Sailors and Marines, they've lived and trained together, fought side by side, all over the world. Navy Marine officers and their staffs have created an always effective, hard-hitting team, which speaks a common language and has a common goal, to provide our nation with versatile, capable, powerful, combat-ready teams unknown before in time of peace. And Marines do get around, around the world, that is. They may follow the wide-flowing highway of the seven seas aboard ships of the U.S. Navy. Around the globe and across the ocean, Marines may find duty stations in many ports of call. itself is the full free field of the United States Marines. This is our world. This is the community we live in. People once remote are close associates now in a world where lines of time and space are steadily diminishing. To assure peace in this sometimes turbulent neighborhood of nations, our country has agreements and treaties with many countries. Support might be required at any time for these agreements or for our own protection and safety. Crisis in this spinning world can be as fresh as tomorrow morning's headlines. A threat to world peace always exists in varying degrees. And one of the best guarantees for world peace is the power of a strong Navy Marine Corps team poised in readiness. The United States Navy and the Marine Corps enjoy unmatched flexibility. As free as the sea, as mobile as the air, these amphibious forces are an immediate answer to any global emergency. Crisis can't be scheduled and not always controlled. This could be the day of decision. Tonight, this hour, even this minute. And there's a ready reply to world crisis, whatever its nature, wherever it may occur, whoever may provoke it. Take this minute in history. 
if the bell rings, the Navy Marine team would respond. And this is the way events might occur. Decision is reached. The president has directed action. Contingency plans are dusted off. Decision must be made how best to respond to challenge with which of our ready forces, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, or a combination. The aim, to keep limited war limited, to assist a friendly neighbor, to safeguard American lives. For this requirement, send in the Marines. Most essential, according to Admiral Arleigh Burke, is the capability to put modern Marine forces ashore immediately after a limited aggression starts. Traditionally, the first to fight, the United States Marines are always just one step away from an aggressor and prepared to take the next step. Aboard ship, in the air, on the ground. Readiness is a mission for United States Marines. This could be now. Let's hope it's never. But let's say it's now, simulating emergency where Marines are needed. And let's hope that as long as the Marines are prepared to land, they may never in the future be obliged to land. The alert has been sounded. The task force turns toward the target. Global points of possible trouble always find the fleet conveniently close. An amphibious striking force preloaded with combat supplies and equipment from bullets to beans. This fighting team of Navy Marine Corps units prepares now to move in bold and rapid strokes. With coordinated purpose, ships of the line speed toward common objective, refueling at sea from accompanying tankers, a force that includes submarine pickets, carriers, missile cruisers, anti-submarine units, destroyers, and amphibious assault ships. The force battens down for battle as aboard ship marines and sailors complete last minute preparation. In a world of diminished size, time is no longer an ally. Preparation must be accomplished yesterday. Vital intelligence missions accomplished. Marine reconnaissance teams return to perform other assignments when the fighting starts. Mission completed, Navy frogmen are retrieved from the sea. They've been exploring enemy beach lines, installing demolition charges, preparing to blast obstacles and clear passages prior to H hour. Aboard ship, planes prepare to go aloft to protect the task force, to reconnoiter, to deliver first devastating blows while a task force is still hundreds of miles at sea, neutralizing enemy air and missile installations in strikes of maximum shock and sudden surprise. And if needed, the Navy can send special greetings. The mighty Polaris, submarine launched from far at sea to strike and devastate the target. While aboard ship, Radar scans and watches and guards against the enemy. As the amphibious task force closes on the objective area, racing at full speed toward the target, there's a pilot scramble as Navy and Marine fighter craft move to secure the air above objective to establish protective umbrella for landing force. by the Navy's firepower, Marines prepare to seize beachhead in new manner, projecting sea power deep ashore. Blasting the way Navy Marine air has gained air superiority over objective area, carving out aerial corridor for the helicopters, clearing a path for the big birds with their mission to deliver the Marines. With helicopter homing areas determined, Pathfinder personnel plummet in to establish landing zones, install homing devices, electronic signals and markers to keep oncoming helicopters on course and on target. Helicopters crowd carrier decks ready to launch airborne attack over the beach and beyond it, past shore defenses and behind them. As employing vertical assault tactics, pilots prepare for takeoff. The landing is on. As Marines in battle dress move to flight deck, 
Many times on many shores they've been required to land. And now they move out in modern manner, preparing to board helicopters. Their destination, inland beachhead. goes ashore with the larger helicopters as they transport the heavier hardware of war. Major new concept in tactics, helicopter landing delivers Marines beyond enemy defenses, taking lines in reverse, establishing a new front in rear of the enemy. Hurtling the beach and sweeping inland, helicopters accelerate speed of assault. They make it possible for Marine forces to effectively maintain surveillance, disperse quickly, concentrate instantly, outflank or leapfrog troops and weapons as required. Marines may attack with precision in any direction. And the might of a nation provides power for peace. A strong America, this is the difference between free world and slave world. Peace and liberty can be assured only by the strength of a mighty modern U.S. Army an alert and powerful Air Force, a vital, vigilant Navy, and a dynamic Marine Corps, standing strong and standing ready at the call of the President, with the guidance of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And aerial breakthrough is accomplished on magic carpet of transportation. Airlifted Marines linking up deep inland with surface assault storming in across the beach, joining power to hit the enemy from the air, from the land, from the sea. Marine forces come ashore in seaborne attack to add another dimension to Marine Corps assault. Strategically, the mere presence of Navy Marine striking power is a deterrent to limited war, insurance against requirement for force just as our possession of nuclear weapons and our capability to employ them in retaliation is the best possible assurance that they never will be needed. The Navy Marine team is there, ground, sea, and air, reflecting long-established teamwork and close training association. Its feats are legendary. With all elements engaged, Marines may join with other United States Armed Forces if circumstances dictate. Unified commanders have available to them forces and combinations of forces from the Army and Air Force, as well as the Navy component, which includes Fleet Marine Force units, each with its own special way of dealing with an enemy. On land, on sea, in the air, the Marine Corps is equal to the demands of circumstances, willing and able to carry out any mission that may be assigned with ready ability to match threat with power, and power with skill, and even greater power. With full complement of modern weapons and ability to use them, with awareness of task and recognition of responsibility, with organizational perfection and pride in its prowess, with complete capability of employing atomic warheads if obliged to, the Marine Corps represents a formidable power for the preservation of freedom, for the assurance of global peace.
the situation is well in hand, in accord with tradition. Oft-told story in the long and illustrious history of the United States Marines. In the words of the Marine Corps Commandant General David M. Shoup, our Marine Corps exists for but one purpose, to be willing and ready to fight for our country. Ready, willing, strong, and able. The United States Marine Corps is powerful persuasion against aggression, convincing reason for potential troublemakers in the neighborhood of nations to hesitate, to consider possible consequences before provoking the truly peace-dedicated peoples of the world. Go in readiness, and you go in peace. Our way of life is the hope of the world, to be cherished and zealously protected. Our priceless heritage, the gifts of liberty, freedom, and opportunity must be constantly safeguarded. The advancements of our civilization must never be jeopardized. Under God, this is a nation made secure by its inestimable power, its dynamic energies, its ready strength. And these are scenes across the land and in the cities that spell out greatness. These are scenes that speak in eloquence of a nation's wealth, not alone in its industry and in its products, but in its people. A nation's power and glory, these are in the land, in the spirit and devotion of Americans, in continuing contributions to humanity that form a bright beacon for all the yearning, striving peoples of the earth, with ability to produce for a good life, the best life this planet has ever known, with liberty for all. This is a land of surging advancement in all the fields of human concern, including manufacture, medicine, transportation, religion, education, agriculture, communication, and living, and adventure into the future. This is a land and a nation striving earnestly for peace. The era of permanent peace of which the world has dreamed since its dawning is a hopeful vision of the future, a goal eventually to be gained by brotherhood and not by battle, by humanity and not by predatory conquest. Global peace must be our everlasting aim and dedication, but not peace at any price. And the price for the present is preparedness, vigilance, readiness, watchwords for almost 200 years of the United States Marine Corps, a force in readiness. <laughs>